Well, the recent crypto boom has been a huge boon for the NFT space. That news uh, that Visa purchased a CryptoPunk NFT for $150,000, sparking a burst of transactions in the digital artwork that totaled more than $20 million in sales just in the hour after Visa announced the initial uh, purchase. Churnin Group operating partner Jared Dicker joins us now for a deeper dive into the growing NFT environment. Jared, great to have you with us. Thanks. Great to be here. Um, Dan was making the comparison to the ICOs. Obviously, a lot of them went away. Um, so how do you sort of separate the wheat from the chaff in terms of NFTs, value, or, or just craze? Yeah, um, I'd say the biggest thing to focus on as it relates to NFTs is that for the first time in forever on the Internet, um, there is now ownership for digital goods. You know, everything um, for the past 20 years has always been able to be replicated, whether that's music or art or content. And what the NFT model has really started to introduce is that there could be one of ones, things could be owned, they could be, uh, be distributed, and there's value against them. So I'd say the biggest difference between what we saw with ICOs, which was um, speculation around certain companies, and NFTs, which is the ownership of individual goods, is that this is really tying to a bunch of, uh, like a bunch of trends. We're seeing uh, status and identity tied to NFTs. We're seeing the ability to own and trade digital goods. Um, we're also seeing like the ability to open 24-7 markets around these digital collectibles and valuables. So I'd say the big difference and nuance here is that it is for the first time ever on the internet putting value on digital goods. Um, how do you determine, though, that buying a digital rock, let's say, is going to be <laughs> lasting value? Um, versus effectively buying the rights to a particular JPEG or the equivalent of one. I mean, I, th this may sound like really elementary, but to a vast you know, group of people out there, buying a digital rock just seems nuts. <laughs> it is absolutely early days. I mean, I'd say that we can say the same thing around certain things that are purchased in the physical world. Um, one way to really think about it is, as we transition from physical to digital in the internet age, we really lost a lot of the monetization models and the values that we used to put on things physically because in the digital world, those values were unable to be held. And now that we're seeing with NFTs and this kind of introduction of these digital goods holding values, we're starting to see a lot of those physical semblances start to come back into the internet and onto the web. So um, again, uh, some people love rocks, some people love bored apes, some people like crypto punks. A great way to think about it, um, especially for those that cannot understand why people would buy these things, is that um, status and identity are really kind of tied to these. Like, why do I wear a certain shirt or carry a certain bag when I'm walking down the street? People want to identify, they want to join certain communities and access by buying these certain things, whether it's a rock or a board ape and making that your profile, really brings a lot more value than just the digital good itself. It opens up community, it opens up conversation. Um, if you're an investor, it could open up deal flow. If you're looking to connect with other like-minded people, it really starts to give you access and social status. So uh, I think a way to think about it too is beyond just that individual value of that good, but what sort of status and identity that value starts to open up for individuals on the internet. Hey, hey Jared, can you give us a sense of how important this um, acquisition by Visa, a large corporate, um, you know, entering into this market is? Is it just a marketing ploy, or are we going to see more corporates, big institutions, big holders, you know, get in and do this sort of thing, or is this really going to be a retail-driven um, craze here? It absolutely makes sense for Visa to get involved. I mean, NFTs are a new business model on the internet. I'd like to think about it the same way that we've seen advertising drive the growth of Facebook and Google, or subscriptions drive the growth of Netflix and Spotify. The, for the first time in a long time, we have an entirely new native internet business model where companies and individuals can make money off of what the NFT is able to bring. So a company like Visa coming in that's really trying to focus on the future of commerce and transactions, it makes absolute sense for them to start um, start playing around and, and socializing the notion that this could be a new way to transact. This is kind of the new way of commerce. And I think we'll see more, uh, more institutions doing that as well. I mean, there's examples of things happening in the music world, um, really trying to rethink the notion of programmable royalties or tickets and how artists make money and how venues make money. Um, we're seeing it across a variety of different institutions. And I think Visa's entry at this time is very smart.
Um, I think it's very forward thinking, um, but I also think it makes absolute sense tied to their business model and being able to go into one, be able to explore and see what the phenomena is about and what value it brings, but two, really deeply understand how this future of commerce is going to move and have a say in it, I think is incredibly smart of them. In terms of the future of commerce and transactions, Jared, we talk about stocks. Um, so can NFTs be used in the stock market? I mean, it seems like that would be the easiest route to same day or almost instantaneous settlement. The way, uh, the way to think about NFTs, which I think even go beyond how the stock market is set up, is um, when Coinbase emerged and what Coinbase has really brought to value today is this notion of 24-7 markets, right? For the first time, individuals were able to purchase, trade, and hold currencies 24-7, regardless of when the market opens and closes, they were able to engage. And I think we're seeing that same thing spill over to a bunch of different markets. I mean, we at TCG did an investment in a company called Zed Run, which is a virtual horse racing platform, 24-7 <laughs> horse racing, where consumers could buy uh, and purchase horses. They could train them. Um, they could race them and both share in the upside um, and also be able to kind of transact on individual races. So I'd say there's definitely some sort of connection and value that NFTs could bring to the stock market. But I think what we're seeing more of, especially as we're seeing things outside of the financial sector, is that this notion of 24-7 markets is now attainable, and we'll mm -hmm. see it go beyond financial into sports, entertainment, music, and so on. Jared, great to speak with you. Hope you come back soon. Thank you so much. Jared Dicker. Guy, yes, Mel. Think? Well, if I were to get into the virtual horse racing business, I'd be the schmo that have to clean out the virtual stables, which is a job <laughs> that nobody wants. This is so beyond my scope. Let me say quickly, though, don't dismiss for a fact that so much of what we've been talking about in terms of crypto, NFTs, do not fall at the feet of now central bankers globally who have flooded the world with, with liquidity. And this, to me, is the aftermath of all that. It makes perfect sense in that context. Brian Kelly, how do you separate value from craze, hype, et cetera, in this marketplace? Yeah, so it's interesting. I mean, I agree with Dan that the frenzy around these remind me very much of the ICO frenzy. And we don't have the legal structures around this that we probably would want to have if you're really going to transact uh, for art. However, you asked the question about how stocks can benefit from this. Think about a company like Nike. They could actually put digital Air Jordans out there that somebody could buy and wear around online. And so now you don't only have the direct to consumer, but you have this digital channel. Everything that Nike sells can now be digitized. And so that can add to the bottom line. To me, that's where I think the promise of NFTs for corporations are, as opposed to buying a rock or a board ape or whatever else anybody wants to buy. All right. I mean, use in the metaverse. That's a in the one, metaverse, right? exactly. Yep, in the metaverse.